Welcome back to the CRF 300 build. Woo! The peg, shifter, brake lever, all that uh, is the same as it was stock. But I definitely could use an upgrade. That's some really cheap hardware on there. They basically made those about as cheap as they could. This is a budget bike, so it's a good place to look to do some upgrades. In fact, we actually just ran into a bit of a problem with the stock setup when we were out at the Red River Off-Road Park in the last video. Uh, the bike went down at one point, and of all things, it fell on the brake side, which does not have a bending folding lever, and it's just so flimsy and bendable that it just bent right in. And not only does it bend in, when it bends in, it actually just makes contact with the oil uh, filter cap. So it's like, <laughs> it put a good gouge in it. Luckily, it seems okay, but uh, we can increase both the, the ergonomics and the strength of everything and make it look cooler at the same time. So it's a really easy upgrade. A lot of people do this pretty early on. Once again, Revzilla has set us up with all the parts you're gonna see here today. So huge thanks to them. The first item I have here is the Moose Racing forged shift lever. There it is in all its glory. Look at that guy. Oh, it's got the, the, fold, the folding bit is important. I will say the stock lever does fold, but the stock lever is also just a piece of like stamped metal through here, but this is actually a nice piece of aluminum. It's just much, much stronger. Weighs nothing. Then over on the brake side from Zeta, this beautiful guy, look at this thing folding unlike the stock one. This is even adjustable. You can move this forward or back just a little bit. This is, I think they call this like a, like a snake bite or something. It's supposed to keep grass from getting shoved up in between your brake and your the side of your bike if you're going through a bunch of high grass, which could actually make it where you couldn't push the lever down. Basically, you tether this to somewhere on the bike. In our case, we'd probably just use the skid plate. We'll have to take a look at that when we install it. This is super beef. It's not a piece of stamped steel like the stock one. This is a nice piece of aluminum. And again, I have seen that these will bend if they get into an accident. I think it would be concerned that maybe this is almost too rich but I don't think so. I think it's gonna do well. And then finally we have IMS pegs. I don't know, IMS. These guys right here, check it out. <laughs> they definitely give you a much bigger platform. Not necessarily any longer than the stock one from what I can tell. I think it's about the same, but it is a wider, more beef, just stronger pegs. Very good to have. One funny thing though about the shifter and the brake levers, the reds on these are pretty close, but they're not quite the same. Ideally, I guess you'd get these from the same manufacturer. That way they're exactly the same, but they're very close. The fact that one's gonna be on one side of the bike, one's gonna be the other. No one would ever know unless they've seen this video that they didn't perfectly match. None of this stuff, claims it will fit the CRF300L, but I believe it will. I think they just haven't updated their stuff to say. So obviously the shifter will, that's like a no brainer, but uh, we'll have to see about this and the pegs. And uh, if I'm correct, then Revzilla, can we can add that to your site that it fits them. I think it does. This should not take much time at all. Let's go knock it out. We'll start with the pegs. There's a pin underneath here. We need to bend this clip so that we can pull this pin out. I always like to put on a pair of old motorcycle gloves to do that. I should be able to push this pin up. It could be a little funny because it's got pressure on it from the spring. It's sticking out now, if I can just, yeah, there we go. And there's your bag. First thing I'll do, I'm just give all this a quick kind of wipe down. It was a little grimy in there, as you'd expect. When you get these pack of pegs, you gotta figure out which one's which, and it's not as apparent as you think it would be sometimes. If you look here, that one's obviously not it. That one's it. And the shape looks exactly the same. I'm pretty sure this is gonna fit. You will wanna get yourself a new cotter pin. Personally, I hate these little weak, dinky ones. Use one of these thicker ones here that I like to use these thick ones, but to do that, I'm probably gonna have to open this hole up just a little bit. I know most people probably aren't gonna bother doing that. I just like these so much better. I think they're easier to work with. And it's only gotta make this hole a little bit bigger for that to go through. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Yep, see how our thicker one fits in there. Got my spring sitting in the peg here. There's a hole right here on the frame, and some of these can be a real pain to get in here, but look at this one. This one's very simple, it just goes right in. <laughs> some of them you have to get in there with like a screwdriver and do a whole thing, kind of hold it in place. Now we just gotta manipulate the pin through. We might have to kind of push and wiggle this thing to get it lined up just right. There it is. That is the correct position. That is folding the right way. So this peg does 100% work on this bike. <laughs> Rubs a little more snug than normal, but that's fine. That's fine. Now let's open the Carter pin up. Nice. Let's do the other side. Let's do the shifter. Now, I've removed the sprocket cover because this bolt's gonna hit the cover. So, 
two eight millimeters, pull the cover off. Sorry I didn't film that. The new one does look to maybe be a very minor pinch longer, but nothing major. It's definitely not gonna get in the way of our case here. You can just see the general construction. This is getting much, much better. I like the position this is currently in. Basically just right out from the foot here. We're gonna try to make the other one the same way. We need to take this bolt out. This sort of acts like a clamp and it clamps itself tightly onto the spline here, but you can't just loosen the screw to get it out. You have to fully remove it. Let's see when we pull it off, wiggle action here. There it goes. There's a little crease in there that the bolt uh, sort of sits into, so it can't come out if the bolt's in there at all. Clean these spline off just a little bit here. Fully remove the screw to the new one. And again, this is where we can sort of adjust wherever we want it. These splines give us quite a lot of adjustability. There we go, a little hand hammer action there. That looks about right, but before I put the bolt in and tighten it down, get my get up there with the boot, see how I feel about that. I like that. All right, I'm gonna leave that like that. If you later on decide you don't like it though, as you can see, it's incredibly easy to go in there and change. Make sure you got it lined up. Drop our screw in. No need to go crazy on that, just snug it up, that'll be fine. Awesome, got the folder on there. The stock one folded too, but this is obviously just a lot more beef, stronger. Definitely gives me confidence out there in the field that this isn't just going to smash in, in my day. So far it's all been pretty easy, but now we come to the brake. We've saved the brake pedal for last just because it's the hardest. It's still not hard, there's just a little more to do. Let's remove some of these springs. This little spring hidden back here just tells the brake when to, the brake light when to turn on. When it gets pulled down, activates as a switch, so that's fine. We just kind of push that to the side and it can just exist right there. This spring you won't just simply be able to remove with a screwdriver, unfortunately. You'll need to get something like a spring puller, put some good gloves on eye protection the whole nine. Be careful with those springs. Once again, it's the game of the cotter pin. There's one that holds the brake to the master right here. Sorry, I just cannot find a great way to film this. My head's gonna have to get in the way for just a second. It's the same procedure you guys just saw dealing with cotter pins. Got it. Be able to push this forward and there it is. And then there's this clip back here and I think we can just sort of push this guy up and yeah, there you go. Ah, oh, these kind of great. Awesome, love that style right there. Because with that, we move this down, and push that out, there we go, and we got it. Stock one may be just a pinch longer, if you kind of see it, the, the point there, but hopefully that won't be a big deal. The hole actually in the frame there does look a little dirty. I'm gonna try to clean it up. It looks like it might even be a little bit of surface rust in there. If there is, we need to take care of that before we carry on. Still looks like there's a tiny bit of rust right here at the beginning. It looks like this is unpainted in there. This is just a steel collar. There's a little seal that sits on both ends of these and we make sure that this has got a good bit of grease in there. And honestly, it just didn't have a lot of grease. The grease is good too because the seals are not gonna be perfect. And we put a nice bit of grease in there when we put this back in. That will help seal it a lot better. That feels good in there. Putting some grease all up into the hole here. Also kind of in this recess where the seal's gonna sit. Same thing on the back side as well as I threw some on the shaft itself. O-rings on right here. Stick this actually down the shaft like that. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and press this guy in. To rotate up a bit to get over the break. Before I put that other back side on, I'm gonna go ahead and slip this other pin in. I'm gonna stick the other O-ring on now, followed by the washer. Then we can hopefully get our fancy clip back on here. There it goes. Now we have to put a little cotter pin back in this guy. Again, my head's just gonna be in the way for that. <laughs> it's one of those fun things, you know, it's like, I don't know how to film this. Put the spring back on, it's feeling good. It's doing what brakes are supposed to do. Where are my gloves? Where am I? No time, full danger mode. Do as I say, not as I do, right? These springs are super soft. You can usually just do a quick test here, make sure that's still doing right. I have to push it way down to get the current turn on. These are adjustable. You might be able to get your finger in here and turn the adjuster, and you probably is what that's meant for, but let's pop that off so you can see what's happening better in there. This is the adjuster right here. It's as simple as something you can just turn by hand. What we need is to bring it up a little bit higher so that it actually comes on sooner. Screw this down a little bit. Oh, there it goes. 
all that stuff now is hook on our little snake bite device, whatever you want to call it. And I'm thinking we got a perfect loop right here in the frame. This frame, this kid plate, and that should be fine. It's kind of what they suggest you do, and that should give us plenty of slack there where everything will still work in accordance as it's supposed to. Loosen up our little Allen screws on here. These are pretty small. There it is. We'll put it down in its own sort of little sheathing there. That looks good like that. And before I tighten this back up, I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these threads. Cause I don't particularly want this coming off by accident. Much stronger now, foldable. We got our little snake bite thing in there if we ever need such a device. There we go, easy enough. Got rid of this old junk on here. This is cheap, crappy stuff. This is actually kind of heavy too. Don't get crazy or anything. Don't get excited. You're not shaving 20 pounds off or anything. Probably not even a pound, but hey, something there to talk about. But I love it. Remember, we're gonna be at the Adventure Moto Fest. We're gonna ride this thing all the way to the Mojave Desert, ride out there, then ride it all the way home. Obviously, we won't have it in Motar trim for that. We'll have it in the Adventure trim. But yeah, that's coming up soon. The link for that's in the description. You need to check that out. Also, there is a longer, better version of these videos. It's over on Patreon. The next video is already out on Patreon. There's a cool Discord on the Patreon that you can come in there and chat with me in person. You can talk with me. Like, I get on there almost every night. And you can do all that, support these videos, and make them possible for like a dollar a month. So if you would check it out, and uh, otherwise, we'll carry on. There is so much still to do to this thing. <laughs> I wanna get it done before full on summer gets here so we can really just enjoy the hell out of it. All right, see you in the next video. Oh, my God.